Are you overwhelmed by life's burdens? Feeling lost and alone like there is no way out? You're not alone. Well, we all go through darkness. But what if the light of hope is closer than you think? In this particular video, we are talking about Surah at duha which brings hope and reassurance. And why have we chosen this particular surah for um, as a solution to your problem? Well, in Islam, there are diff several different ways to soften our hearts. But for our paradigm, we have chosen to learn from the lessons outlined in Surah Duha to heal trauma through heart. You know, before the Surah was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ was sad and anxious because he didn't receive revelation from Allah in some time. And on top of that, some of those who disbelieved in his message mocked him, saying that Allah was clearly displeased with him. So Allah comforted him through the verses in the Surah. And we too are comforted and now equipped with five areas of growth and healing from the Surah's verses. The first area of growth and healing is attachment. In the third ayah of the Surah, Allah says, Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor has He detested you. In other words, Allah comforts the Prophet and assures him that he has not been abandoned. Similarly, the trauma we experience in our lives isn't because Allah hates us or or He has stopped protecting us. By simply knowing this, we begin to regrow our attachment to Allah. Number two is shifting perspectives. In the next verses, Allah states, And the hereafter is better for you than the first life, and your Lord is going to give you and you will be satisfied. Allah is giving the Prophet perspective that although things may look bleak right now, they will get better. Every difficulty comes to an end, and the hereafter is better for the Prophet and for us as believers. Number three is cognitive therapy. In the next set of verses, Allah says, Did He not find you an orphan and give you refuge? And He found you lost and guided you? And He found you poor and made you self-sufficient? Here Allah points out the blessings in the Prophet's life to once again reshape how he was thinking about a situation. This is one of the most fundamental techniques of cognitive therapy. Number four is behavioral activation. Then in the ninth and tenth verses, Allah commands, So as for the orphan, do not oppress him, and for the petitioner, do not repel him. In this way, we are reminded of the importance of taking actions that will change our thoughts. This once again aligns with cognitive behavioral theory that states that our behavior impacts our thoughts. And number five, the fifth area of growth and healing is cultivating gratitude. Finally, in the last verse, Allah tells the Prophet and the believers to acknowledge and proclaim their blessings. In short, be grateful to your blessings. Time and time again, scientists found that small practices like fasting and reflecting on blessings have an immense impact on well-being. So, Surah Duha offers a light at the end of the tunnel, reminding us that Allah's support is always with us. So, let's take these lessons to heart and find comfort and guidance in this beautiful Surah. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Aspiring Muslim for more uplifting content. Allah Hafiz and Assalamu Alaikum.